Have you ever asked all your donors to give the same amount to fund one of your projects or programs? Well, you may have made a huge mistake by offending some with an amount that's too large or worse, significantly under-challenging an even larger group of your donors. This is called the myth of the multiples. Today, I'll define this myth and how you can avoid it in the future. Stay tuned for ways to not commit this offense for your organization. We've all heard an offer similar to this. Text the word XYZ to 90999 to donate $50 to the national nonprofit organization and help them to rebuild after a devastating earthquake. The offer sounds so tempting and it is. It's a classic example of emotional fundraising. A nonprofit striking at the heart of someone who feels bad for those in great need. And from a fundraising standpoint, many of these campaigns are highly successful in bringing in a significant amount of money. However, solicitations like this violate sound development principles and fall into the trap of what we call the myth of the multiples. The myth of the multiples assumes that if enough people give a single amount, the need or fundraising goal will be met. Most nonprofits implement this strategy by taking the number of people that they will be challenging divided by the total goal to get an average amount to ask for, or they come up with a standard average gift amount within a given database and that number is used for the giving amount in the offer. There is one set amount and everyone is asked to give that amount and there is very little wiggle room or opportunity to deviate from that amount. No way to give more, no way to give less. There are two significant problems with this strategy and I'll first address those problems and then recommend solutions. Problem number one, this strategy over challenges some and greatly under challenges all the rest. The chosen gift amount is often more than some people can afford, but in most cases, significantly less than people can afford, thus under-challenging your largest donors and high-capacity prospects. This results in a missed opportunity as the full capacity of the donor is never reached, leading to dissatisfaction on the part of both parties. Nonprofits become frustrated because they didn't reach all their fundraising goals and donors are frustrated because they didn't make the kind of impact that a truly significant sacrificial gifts made. What's the solution? Well, current or potential partners or donors are offered gift ranges that are established based on their past giving or their capacity or capability to give based on research. When done incorrectly, someone who is capable of giving $5,000 is asked for 50. And data reveals that this is typically the only gift ever given to the organization. When done correctly, the true capacity to give is reached and the true desire of the donor to make a real difference in our world is achieved. Current or potential donors or partners who fall in a higher capacity or giving range, say 5,000 or more, are called or even visited. This opens the door for building deeper relationships with the partners and that often leads to larger, more meaningful gifts and involvement with time, talents, as well as money. Problem number two. Friend raising should always be the goal of any development effort since it's the end result to raise up long-term partners who come alongside our organization and support us with their labor, their influence, finances, and expertise. The myth of the multiple strategy focuses in on the immediate donation, not on building a long-term relationship with people, which ultimately leads to friends who give funds. What's the solution? Friend raising looks for ways to understand the interests and desires of the donor or partner and align those with the mission, vision, and values of the organization. If there is an intersection between the two, then the partner will have a desire to get to know us better and us know them better. A friendship is built on respect, trust, and mutual goals. Ideas are shared and collaboration begins. As that bond grows stronger, the partner feels a desire 
to contribute with their time, talents, and treasures. This process can take months or years to develop, but it's often worth the wait as a solid foundation of partnership is built. Gifts are given in hopes that together goals are achieved. A transformational relationship should be the goal in friend raising. Transformational relationships are ones where because lives are changed and missions are achieved, that is the way you want to go. None of those things exist in a fundraising strategy, especially one based on emotional giving. Yes, money's raised, but in most cases, they're single, one-time gifts that are given and a second gift is never seen. Fundraising strategies usually do not include a component to determine the interest of the donor, only that they have money to give. But just as with an ATM, people are seen purely as a financial solution to the problem, a means to an end. The relationship is not transformational, but transactional. Money is exchanged and that's it. The solution is that friend raising with current or potential donors or partners who fall in a higher capacity or giving range, 5,000 or more are called or even raised in order to have transactional relationships. A gift may ultimately be given, even a sacrificial gift, but not until the relationship has been established. So the next time someone recommends that you challenge everyone on your list in an email, direct mail, an event, or in person to give the same amount to accomplish your goal. Tell them, I don't do fundraising, I do friend raising. You need to have a long-term perspective on giving. If I gave you a choice to get 500 today or 5,000 in six months, which would you choose? I believe the answer is simple. The 500 comes purely from fundraising and may not yield a second or a third gift and probably won't build a friend for life. But a $5,000 gift comes from a friendship established on trust and mutual collaboration. It's like a cord of many strands that's unbreakable. Fundraising is built on one single strand and is easily broken. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, let me know by giving it a thumbs up and leave a comment below if there were things you especially liked or if there are topics you'd like to address. And let this community of life changers know you're part of making a difference in our world. If you wish to watch future videos on this channel, hit the subscribe button and click the bell to be notified immediately of the next release. If you wish to follow me on Instagram, go to at Jim W. Dempsey, or if you have questions, go to Twitter, also at Jim W. Dempsey, and use the hashtag Jim and Java. If you wish to be part of a growing community of like-minded leaders, join our Life Changers group on Facebook. If you want to know what to do and what to say on an appointment with a major donor, watch this video and get your development efforts to the next level. As always, I wish you the best as you strive to become fully funded. Thanks a lot. See you in the next video.